What is up guys, in today's video we're going to be spectating random players in Fortnite Zero Build. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, remember to give it a like, subscribe if you like to see more. And comment down below what you hope to see in next week's update. I, I think a lot of people are going to say something to do with the shotgun balance of the game. Uh, but this upcoming Tuesday should be the second major update of Chapter 5 Season 1. And hopefully brings a decent amount of content. I know a lot of people were kind of let down with the prior metal major update the metal gear update uh but i don't think this next one is supposed to be a collab or anything like that so we'll, we'll see if we actually get you know some solid fortnite like specific content and maybe like some sort of development on the map or like build up for whatever is going to be happening in uh, season two because we are relatively close to chapter five season two i think march 8th is the final day of the season so we got about a month left or so uh a little more than that until season two which is like kind of crazy to think about we are over halfway done with uh chapter five season one i'm gonna go over to this player yeah cause i think that player that just landed is an ai a lot of the times the ai will land super late yo come here brother you got it thank you God, the pump is depressing this season, but we are going to be on board with uh, Peanut. He's got the solid snake skin out. Speaking of Metal Gear, there is a player outside, but I'm pretty sure this is an AI because of how late they landed. And you can see now with the how they're playing that not much of a threat. Yeah, I have full metal. That is 100% a bot name. There is another player in this building here, but it might be a somewhat similar case where, yeah, they're so late to get anything done in the game. And that is going to be the elimination on Anonymous, but I'm decently sure that was an AI as well. Um, and now Peanut has left the game. And this is the struggle of making spectating videos sometimes is random stuff like that happens. So we're going to be on board with DC uh, landing at fencing. I believe the last one of these videos I made, I also landed fencing. So I didn't want to land here for this one, but it just kind of is what it is. This player is coming over to third party the boss, but you see DC... What the heck just happened? I think I accidentally hit the button. But DC did a good play there. He wasn't too caught up in the fact that the AI was fighting. And he just dealt with that potential third party before it became a problem. I like that. Uh, someone did eliminate the boss and get the medallion. So that is going to be a problem. But a lot of times it's so chaotic for the player that eliminates the boss. That you should be able to just clean this up relatively easily. They broke shield on the player. I think that's going to be the medallion holder. And they did hit him for 20 white as well. They get the kill. That player had a business turret planted, but DC actually played that quite well. Was never really exposed for the business turret for any decent length of time. Uh, and just played his right shoulder peak and eventually got that elimination. I think shutting that back door might be a problem. Because if he needs to run out, uh, he won't be, he'll have to stop his healing. But it's okay. A player underneath him just activated the cloaking EMP. There is an audio cue for it. Uh, they came out of the EMP as well. But I heard that player activate the cloaking EMP. And this is going to be a problem. GG. I'm actually sad that player died. I was excited to spectate them. But I said it's about to be a problem that they dropped their auto shotgun. I don't think having the pump was the play there. And then you see this aura just walks forward with an auto shotgun and gets the elimination. And it's not like this aura was the healthiest player ever. You know, they only have a 50 shield. They're not full HP. So I think that fight was pretty winnable for DC. It's just like the pump... Scar or Striker AR playstyle is just, it's rough to make it work this season. The the auto shotgun is just so good. And if you have a player that just hops in on you like that with the auto shotty and gets first shot, it's going to be really hard to outplay that situation unless you hit like an incredible pump shot. And that's why a lot of players prefer the auto shotgun. You can have a mid performance with the auto shotgun and do just fine. Whereas the pump requires you to be perfect in that situation. Uh, and that is, it's just more likely to happen. The gun that does well even with like average aim uh is going to be the play so uh, unfortunately dc loses that fight but that's actually what i was about to say don't really know what this aura is doing they keep activating the cloaking mp i'm not sure if there's like a challenge to activate it a certain amount of times or what you can break the floor in this vault um and they did get snipers luckily for them because with last week's update they made it to where snipers are no longer guaranteed on these racks like you see uh the weapon that's on the bottom right is an enforcer ar and it used to be the right side was guaranteed snipers 
that's no longer the case. So they're going to be going for a very standard loadout of auto shotgun, shockwaves, mythic striker, AR sniper. So I think this is good. This is what I would like to use. There was a blue auto shotgun back on that loot where uh, DC was eliminated. Um, this person missed it. It's not the biggest deal. Like one rarity difference on auto shotgun is not the end of the world in my opinion. Not really sure what this person is trying to do here. I guess they just wanted to waste the shockwave because they're going to get the grapple blade anyways, which personally I prefer shockwaves to the grapple blade, but the grapple blade is quite good too. There's a player up here on this rock that would be an easy snipe for him, but he's more worried about this person, the ninja turtle. Um, and okay, he gets the elimination, but that's rough. And this is where shockwaves would be great because if that other player that's behind the rock over there decides to push, it's going to be tough to get out of here with a grapple blade. But if they have shockwaves, they could just shockwave out and it's no big deal. Um, they go for the challenge there. Doesn't go their way. And now we're going to be on board with Bobby Bips. Bobby Bips placed out that business turret. I don't think the turret was that helpful in that fight. People, I think, very much overrate this item. And there is a medallion player coming from... Uh, I guess... I guess that's going to be Grand Glacier. Maybe it's Peter Griffin. I think it's helpful to know which medallion player you're about to fight to kind of predict which mythics they'd have, especially this early in the game. Maybe it could be Lavish, but that's so far. I think this is likely Peter Griffin. So they they maybe have the mythic pump, but it's not always the case that people take the mythic pump. The scopes are just like so bugged in, in spectator replay mode now. This player is just going to get on them in 50-50. Um, and they win the fight. This leaves them very vulnerable to a potential third party though, because look how much damage they took there. They got the duck. Emblem. There's more people fighting in here. They very may well be AI though. Got fried by the business turret there, but it never did any actual real damage. Just uh overshield. And so this player is actually going for a pretty interesting playstyle where they're not gonna carry any shield items and they're just gonna try to carry double mobility and have the medallions. And I think as of now they have two medallions. So yeah, so they can heal up to 60 shield. And this is kind of the main playstyle that got really nerfed by the medallion nerf that happened in December is that you need all the medallions to heal to 100 health. And so not carrying any heals like this is a lot more risky. Luckily for them, they find a med kit and there's two barrels here. So they're going to be able to get to 180 health. But we'll see if this player ever gets like caught up in a situation where like not having heals can uh, really negatively impact their game, especially with how they were playing versus the player we were previously spectating. They kind of just 50 50 them with, with no early damage or anything. And it worked out for them. They got the elimination. I think this player was the better player. But. Um, it left them weak. And if they played like that throughout the rest of the game, I think the fact that they weren't carrying heals and they were relying solely on the medallions could have come back to bite them. And, you know, if they lose that fight immediately, I'm kind of sad that player seemed like a good player. Uh, just kind of unfortunate that the auto shotgun is a thing. And that is just how good the auto shotgun is. The, the person we were previously spectating, I think, did pretty much everything right in that fight. They hit, they went for a snipe, which is kind of risky, but they hit the snipe and then swapped to their pump. Uh, and I don't know if they missed their pump shot or if it just didn't hit very hard. And then I think they swapped to their spray as well. And it's just like, that is how perfect you have to be, even with the mythic pump, to defeat the auto shotgun this season. Like, the, the auto shotgun is just very, very good. It sounds like there's a player, okay, never mind. It's the NPC. I was about to say, it sounds like there's a player above uh, this lifeguard man. I've never actually been down here, I don't think. Or, like, spent any time down here. Really. But, yeah, I I'm kind of sad the player we were spectating lost. Because the point I was trying to make is... With being how aggressive they are, and 50 50 the person how they did earlier, that aggression very much could come back to bite them. But they, they just end up getting pushed by somebody else and... Lose the fight anyways. So they have to be concerned about zone here. Let's see where the zone goes. There is another medallion over here that they can maybe go for. If you wanted to get this in this player's situation, I think you'd want to get a car and try to kind of meet them on this edge. Wouldn't really want to go into Reckless to fight them. Although you could because zone is not hitting hard right now. 
it's gonna hit for one even after the storm phase closes so it's like really not that big of a deal there's a player grapple blading above them this is good this low ground is advantageous just don't peek force that guy to go into you and then if they get to like right here you could start auto shotgunning them they hit the snipe okay geez. but that is a situation where low ground was kind of favored if this player was spectating i think it's called castaway jonesy if they just hug this wall that goblin had to expose themselves so much to get an angle on them uh they went for the snipe they hit it but that was kind of risky if, if they didn't hit that snipe then they probably would have lost that fight because they didn't just like stay with the auto shotgun so i think just hugging that wall as close as you can and using your auto shotgun it's kind of play there but it works out in the end people are hitting some crazy snipes of this game i think this is very much a kill you want to go for if you're this castaway jonesy because he's carrying the medallions personally i don't really carry the medallions in zero build anymore i feel like the risk kind of outweighs the reward especially with how chaotic it is you see people just like full sending the medallion player we're spectating over and over again and you know you can get those kills it's great but even like sometimes it'll just leave you vulnerable to third parties and that's not great and then also with how good snipers are i feel like just having yourself broadcasted at all times gonna lead to you getting sniped from who knows where more often i don't think this ammo matters so is he just gonna hide in this attic uh it tilts me so much when people just kind of waste time what i'm trying to say is i don't use the medallions but if you're gonna carry the medallions you might as well get all of them so you actually have the benefit so if I'm this player, I'm very much wanting to meet this player around here uh, and try to clean that kill up. And then this player that we're spectating would have four, but uh, not really sure what they're doing. But I think that needs to be the priority. If you're going to use the medallions, I feel like you might as well get all of them. And even if you don't want to use them, I do like going for the medallion users just to eliminate them and get them out of the game. Because oftentimes they tend to be the more proactive, better players in the lobby. And if you're able to deal with them, uh, especially when you have the advantage of kind of knowing where they are and they don't really know exactly when you're coming, it makes your game a lot easier. So I'm, I'm guessing he's... I'm hoping that he's just camping in this bush, hoping to catch the other medallion player rotating into him. Hopefully he didn't just like leave and, and then we're spectating who, them for who knows how long because this player has seemed decent uh, with the kills that they've gotten. Like they haven't seemed bad by any means. It's hard to tell with the auto shotgun sometimes though, because like anybody can kind of kill anybody and a lot of players are going to take damage in fights anyways. All the medallion players are here. So the winner of this fight is going to have all the medallions. And again, everybody here is already carrying one. So something likely that they would like to have. I think it's best to either carry all of them or none of them. With the nerf to the healing. It used to be that you could use one or two and kind of not give your location away that much and still heal a lot. But if you only have one or two now, you only heal up to 60. Uh, I would rather not be broadcasted than heal to, to like 50 or 60 personally. And I think it can also kind of, we didn't, I don't think we really saw this happen at all this game, but I feel like the medallions can kind of bait people into like feeling like they have to not heal until they reach the cap from their medallion. And then that can like lead to them having less HP. Nice, that's a kill. That's the Oscar medallion. That's a big one to get because not only can he get the medallion there, but he's going to have the mythic auto shotgun. And this player is already using the auto shotgun. So chances are the mythic one would be a nice benefit. Although it's not there. Okay, so the someone had dropped the medallion earlier after getting the mythic audio. He still gets a gold one, but... See, this is like the struggle with being way too concerned about loot sometimes is like uh, Like just the mess of looting could have cost him if that black knight was like actively trying to get on him while he's looking at that stuff Hits the snipe which is awesome, but the grapple blade isn't as good at pushing If he had shockwaves there hits that snipe shockwave get the kill and then go back for the loot afterwards I think would have been the play especially because at that point he would have all the medallions But letting that player get away may come back to bite him and, and that's one of the reasons why I think shockwaves are preferable to me than the grapple blade uh i think it's just better for like pushing people after you get attack on them uh and just making sure you get that elimination he kills the black knight there that's awesome he can have all the medallions now i would use this fizz this is like kind of what i was talking about where he's just like waiting to heal off the medallions and holding his fizz using the med kit is fine now too but I think you just want to get to max HP as fast as possible. In a situation like this where you're standing out in the open already weak, just pop the Flowberry Fizz in addition to your Medallion Healing. Or, you know, pop a Big Pot in addition to your Medallion Healing and just get as ready to deal with a potential third party as possible. Because how many Medallion players were just over here? You know, there was two two Medallion players and then one Medallion player with one. So 
everybody in the lobby is probably going to kind of be fixated on that spot in zone. I'm very surprised that he didn't get third partied. Um, and this might be a case of what I was talking about before, where everybody decent in the lobby might have already been dealt with. But either way, that's just needlessly risky. You should know in a situation like that that everyone's about to third party you. Uh, and just, I I would rather not have a fizz in my pocket and just be fast, uh, be max HP faster. I would person, uh, I mean, the fizz is good, but I would take one big pot over 50 flowberry fizz just because it's more likely to get better as time goes on. You can find more big pots. You can't really find more fizz and then stack it. He's going to go for the med kits though, since they have all the medallions, which is fine. And it kind of makes them less likely to kind of fall into the trap I was talking about before, where they're like holding their shield items to try to like get the most value out of their medallions or whatever. You have all the medallions. He now will heal even faster and heal up to 100 shield off the medallion. So you might as well carry med kits at that point in time. And again, he's not going to be in the mindset of like, oh, I can't use my heals because I need the medallion. He can just pop the med kit while he's healing off the medallion and regenerate HP decently fast if he does end up in a situation where he takes white health damage in a fight, which can be pretty common uh, with the auto shotgun in the game once again. But that, that fight got very sketchy. They, they end up with the elimination on that Black Knight, but I think that really could have gone either way or both ways with how common trading is in Chapter 5. And that just kind of goes to show the little things I was talking about with like pushing the opponent with shockwaves rather than a grapple blade or like pushing them right away after getting that snipe versus like fumbling around with loot on the ground. I, I think eliminating the other players and just making the area safe is significantly more important than like one rarity upgrade on an auto shotgun, which like if you can get the auto shotgun, that's nice. But like you saw there, something as simple as that almost could have cost him if that black knight pushed. Or if the Black Knight ended up like turning that fight with the second time that happened, or if he got third party. There's a lot of ways in which that situation could have not gone his way, even though it ultimately did like work out well for him. Island is a concern here. Yeah, that's good. Look at how small this circle is. Everybody in the lobby is going to know exactly where he is. I would very much want to have that car over there. I think you kill this Nogops and you get that car. Or just grapple blade to it now so the Nogops can't get it. I highly doubt that Nogops peaks. And they did get sniped from Island, it looked like. Or maybe somewhere on the other side. But I really want to have a car if I have all the medallions like this. I really want to have a car anyways. But one of the downsides of using cars endgame is that people know where you are. Right? But people are going to know where he is anyways. So you might as well take advantage of that. Less likely to get sniped. Faster to traverse the map. And also you can kind of use the close range like juggling yourself in and out of the car to kind of reduce some of the randomness of the auto shotty fights. This is not a good fight to be having. I, I still would like to go for that car that, that was near that Nogops and then just rotate into zone because zone is that way anyways. If you can get this kill quick, that's awesome because then that person isn't going to be behind him anymore. But if this fight takes a decent amount of time, I think this really griefs both players. We're getting to the point where zone is going to start hitting a decent amount. It's already hitting for two. Uh... And even then, he's on the map. People are likely to hold him. So I, I personally would just want to get into zone. Seems like that's what he's going to go for. But he kind of, he has to be worried about people holding him and this player behind him. And everybody's going to basically know exactly where he is. So this is, this is where like having all the medallions can get rough if people do kind of fixate on him, which often will happen if you have all the medallions. Players behind him still. Hitting this snipe would make his life a lot easier. Is that another Black Knight? You got all the rare skins in this lobby. It is. Unfortunately missing the snipes. And this is just leaving them both more vulnerable to third parties than they would be otherwise. These are like my least favorite types of fights to have in Chapter 5. Where both people are just kind of like throwing snipes back and forth hoping one hits. Like I get why it's a thing because the snipers are so good. But it's like kind of random at times I feel like. Like anybody can you know hit a lucky headshot snipe in any moment. This is unfortunate. Still seven opponents remain. Let's look at this zone. 
kind of rough. Being up here is kind of nice, but I think there's like very little cover here. There's like the guard station, but it's kind of low on the mountain. And this is again a zone where having a car would be very nice because then you have your car as cover. You can kind of play the edge of this mountain like this and it like, but he's so exposed. Whereas like if he has a car like on this side, he can kind of look towards that other side and be fine. But it, it's hard for him to kind of do anything here without being exposed to the rest of the lobby. Unless he kind of peeks like that. But I'd like to have my car like right here and then kind of be worried about that angle. This Black Knight behind him is still going to be a problem. Getting this kill would be good because like the fact that him and the Black Knight... Oh, there's bunkers in that, that building. I would want to put those bunkers down on top of the mountain somewhere. Honestly. But I was going to say the fact that neither of the him nor this Black Knight have encountered anybody else makes me kind of think that nobody else is on that side of zone. But the Black Knight did just get fought by somebody. I think it was an AI though. And all the while he's worried about this other side, somebody else could sneak up from the other one. I would be very worried about checking the other side right now. Because the people that were like by that vault area are going to hear this fighting and know that I want a third party that, you know? I want to get that mountain. He's very tunnel vision on this Black Knight. And he just got bodied. There's bunkers in here, which would be of nice use to just put on that mountain. And then you could tunnel vision more on the Black Knight when you have like a position of advantage on this mountain to know that like nobody's just creeping up. But going down to like the base of the mountain like that and leaving the rest of it potentially exposed for somebody to just get the top for free could have easily gone south for him. Because then he's dealing with the Black Knight and that player, whereas like that player and the Black Knight really aren't that likely to be dealing with each other. Which is kind of like what is happening here. This player on top is more likely to deal with the Black Knight than this guy is. Like he's just in between both of them. He's also getting shot in the back on the other side. And that's kind of like what I touched on earlier. Like this mountain is just like pretty exposed. Like it's high ground and it's nice spot in zone. But it's like hard to use this mountain without like being vulnerable to somebody else. That's like 100 damage on that player. You want to grapple blade in here. That, that's not going to be a kill you get. Like ARing that person at that distance from the bush is not ever going to go your way. You can maybe argue that he's getting damage on them and then they're less likely to peek. But again, he's the medallion player. Everybody in the lobby is going to be concerned about him. Somebody on bridge. Hitting a snipe here would be nice. You don't want any fights to take any decent amount of time when you're on edge of zone like this. Now things just get like pretty random. Get sniped. And he has a medallion for heals, but he gets sniped again. So now he's not regening anything off the medallion and he's down to 40 health. He popped the med kit, but now he's exposed to that player too. And this is just a rough situation. And this is why I was saying that you really want to have a car in game. Because having a car here, you actually have mobile cover that you can use anywhere. Getting on the bridge is actually a good idea. I like this. Now they can pop the med kit. They're going to be in storm for a little bit, maybe, but I, that's it's okay. It's hard to make a long-term decision in a, like, a fight like that because things are just going so south. That was actually a very good play. And it, it's good that he had the grapple blades there. Like, I like shockwaves. I prefer shockwaves. I was talking about that earlier, but the, the grapple blade is easier to just get on that bridge like that than the shockwaves are. So 1v1v1. One one. He wants to just get out of this. Grapple blade, grapple blade. The winner of this fight probably loses. Down to 30 health, and the other guy is somewhat healthy in zone. I think it's very unlikely the switch wins that. Maybe they could just hit a bailout snipe, but when it's a 1v1v1 in two fight, it's hard to like make that work out in the end. And that's why I was saying he just wants to grapple blade. Once this lady grapple blades, I think you just want to grapple blade yourself uh, because that witch was like coming behind him and gonna focus him. She's getting medallion here, but I think she only has one medallion, and you see how slow this heals. If this Dusk loses this, this is an absolute throw. Oh no. I think peeking that was bad for that wave. She just want to like pressure her a little bit and keep her like down there and keep her like preoccupied. 
And GG's. I can kind of understand going for the snipe there, because they were at such an HP deficit that it kind of feels like you have to. But, um... Yeah, uh, that's kind of like what I said. This person was very weak, but... When the Castaway Jonesy and that uh, Witch Lady fight, it just makes it very easy for Broski Mitchell uh, to come away with the win. And that's why I think just repositioning until the other people fight or until you have like a decent position of advantage would have been a better play. Maybe his grapple blade was on cooldown. I'm not fully aware of that. But that is going to be it for this video. As always, if you guys found it helpful, informative, interesting, remember to give a like, subscribe if you like some more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.